Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Before I start this video, I'd just like to say once again, like I often say in the comments section of my videos, that Stonehenge is not a modern 20th century construction. The conspiracy theory that says that this monument is a fraud is a complete lie, so please don't get taken in by the disinformation on the internet. But Stonehenge was massively reconstructed. The first project took place in 1901 when a leaning stone was straightened and it was set in concrete to stop it falling over. In the 1920s, more drastic renovations took place and six stones were moved from their fallen position and re-erected under the direction of Colonel William Hawley who was a member of the Stonehenge Society. In 1958, cranes were brought in to reposition three more stones, one of which was a giant fallen lintel. In 1964, four stones were also repositioned to stop them falling. It's no question that the work that took place in the 1920s is a sad story, because this restoration does not follow the strict modern conservation rules. Stonehenge may look pristine today, but more than 100 years ago, it was far more like a forgotten ruin. There is a line between essential restoration work for safety and preservation and significant rebuilding for aesthetic reasons. And in the 1920s, Colonel William Hawley and his team did cross that line. But we have detailed diagrams of the Stonehenge site before the restoration, the positions of the upright and fallen stones were precisely mapped out. We also have some paintings and a few photographs as well. Furthermore, due to the underlying geology and the soil of the Salisbury Plain, during hot summer months, parch marks appear in the grass where the stones would have once stood. So we do know that Stonehenge was once a complete circle. Because of the old documentation and the parch marks, we know that the stones are in the correct original position. But if the work of the 20th century had not taken place, modern conservationists would not have done such drastic work. Stonehenge does look pretty, Oh so pretty, I feel pretty and witty and gay And I pity any girl who's in me today Sorry about that, but with metal rods and concrete added, the site isn't to everyone's taste. But one thing is for sure, this is a Neolithic stone circle and it stands in the heart of a very important ancient landscape of Britain, as shown by the recent discovery of a giant circle of pits that surround the huge nearby stone circle of Durrington Walls. So with that information out there, I'll get to the subject of this video, and that is the work of Richard Bevins et al, who have analysed the geology of the Stonehenge altar stone, long thought to have been brought to the Stonehenge landscape by boats from a quarry in Milford Haven in Pembrokeshire. The theory went that the ancient people collected the famous bluestones from Wales and transported them by boats around the country and then up the Bristol Channel and then made a short journey overland to the site of Stonehenge, which was already a henge monument before any stones were on site. On this journey to the Salisbury Plain, the workers are thought to have stopped off at Milford Haven to collect the altar stone, long thought to be the source of this ancient famous rock. This southwestern Welsh source was a key piece of evidence in support of the boat transportation theory because the bluestones came from further north, and so by plotting the sources of the bluestone rocks and the altar stone, you can almost see the path the workers took to Stonehenge. So, what have the geologists discovered? Well, the altar stone is a greenish sandstone of late Silurian Devonian age. It is known to geologists as Old Red Sandstone, a term I remember very well from my former days as a student of geology. The blue stones are believed to have come from the Presterley Hills in West Wales, but there is no Old Red Sandstone in this area, but there is a source at Mill Bay, south of Presterley in Pembrokeshire. Analysing the Old Red Sandstone in southwestern Wales and that of the Altar Stone at Stonehenge has shown that the two rock types do not match. Mineralogically they're different, with different percentages of its calcite kaolinite barite cement. The zircons show different morphologies and the dates from the uranium lead have contrasting populations. It is now a fact that the altar stone did not come from the old red sandstone at Milford Haven, and the most likely source is a site much further east on the Wales-England border. It was therefore transported to the site overland. 
This revelation is a huge problem for the Bluestone Boat Transportation Hypothesis because this relies on the idea that the Alter Stone came from Pembrokeshire. Indirect evidence for the Neolithic people going around Wales and then up the Bristol Channel. Without this, there is no real evidence to say the Bluestones were transported by boat. Maybe they were, but maybe they weren't. And, in fact, it is more likely they were taken overland if the origin of the Alter Stone was on the Wales-England border. The team of experts now think it is more likely that the exotic stones of Stonehenge, those that are not native to the area, were brought along a land-based route, possibly a man-made or natural track. The Alter Stone was probably collected along the way. The fact is, we can never know for sure. But I still prefer the idea that the Blue Stones and the Alter Stone could all be glacial erratics, transported thousands of years ago by glaciers from Wales to England and then deposited close by. We know that when Neolithic Britain began, the ancient people were setting up fields and moving large rocks and boulders from designated farmland. Therefore, stones were being found and moved to aid agriculture, meaning that Neolithic people were not searching for large stones for any purpose, but they were moving them because they were in the way. Maybe these large piles of boulders were stacking up in the Stonehenge landscape, and then, at some time in the future, the people decided to build a stone circle. The stone circle of Stonehenge wasn't the original phase of the monument. At first it was just a circular bank and ditch, which is known as a henge monument, and it did have a circle of post holes around the edge. The stones came in later phases of work for reasons we don't know. Maybe to replace wooden posts, or maybe to transform the landscape and give it a new purpose. What this new study shows, as well as the news story last week about the giant circle of pits around Durrington Walls, is that archaeology is a fluid subject, ever-changing as our knowledge expands. New scientific and archaeological finds do change the narrative, even ones that so many experts have previously supported. It is good to hypothesise. Of course it is. We all do it, but if we have a hypothesis, we do need to find hard evidence to back it up, because without such evidence, it really is just guesswork. Thank you very much for watching this news update from Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.